Picture this. One day you finally find a first gen iPod that doesn't cost your kidneys. Great. So you run along to your PC, grab your 30 pin cable to sync some music, and. That's right, these older generation iPods didn't use the standard 30 pin connector. Back then, we only had USB 1.1, which was not only slow, but it couldn't supply enough power to charge things, so most MP3 players needed a separate charging cable. Firewire, on the other hand, could do both at the same time, so it made sense until USB 2 came along. But how do you connect this old iPod then? Well, if you have a desktop PC, you can get one of these Firewire expansion cards for fairly cheap, along with a generic Firewire 400 cable. On Amazon, they're usually around 20 bucks, and Windows 11 still has legacy Firewire drivers, which is really cool. Modern iTunes can read first-gen iPods just fine, and the process is mostly straightforward. What about Macs, though? Unfortunately, Apple thinks expandability is a pro feature, so most Macs don't have the option to add expansion cards. Well, there is an alternative solution, and that is to get an older machine that has native Firewire support. MacBooks from the mid-2000s are ideal as dedicated iPod management machines, and you can find them for between 25 to 50 bucks secondhand. Personally, I use this 2007 polycarbonate MacBook. It's got native Firewire 400 support, so no adapters are needed, and I put in an SSD so we can dual boot OS X Snow Leopard and Windows XP for legacy software like Red Snow or iPod Wizard. Now, if you have a modern Mac and you prefer to use that, Finder in the latest versions of macOS still has full iPod support all the way back to the first gen, so you're covered. You just need three different dongles for the job. Normally, I don't recommend this though, because That's right, it costs more to get all of these dongles than it does to get an entire MacBook. All modern Macs come with Thunderbolt 3 or 4, and this can be converted to Firewire. You just need a Thunderbolt 3 to 2 adapter, a Thunderbolt 2 to Firewire 800 adapter, and a Firewire 800 to 400 adapter. Now, I got lucky and got all three of these at the flea market for nowhere near the full asking price. And if you absolutely need this kind of setup, then I'd encourage you to look for listings outside of the Apple Store for a much better price. Once you've assembled the Triforce of dongles, all you need to do is chain them together and connect them to any Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port, and the iPod should be picked up by Finder and the Music app. Now, one common misconception I see online is people saying that this will also work for any USB-C port. Well, Thunderbolt 3 and 4 use the exact same connector type as USB-C. It's important to know that they use different protocols. Thunderbolt ports can accept USB-C devices, but most USB-C ports cannot support Thunderbolt peripherals. For example, I've got this ThinkPad here that only supports USB-C, and if I plug this in, this happens. That being said, the latest USB-4 standard is supposed to be able to work with Thunderbolt 3 devices, but this is still super new, and you shouldn't assume that any USB-C port will work with this. Finally, a word of warning. You might see some Amazon listings for USB-A to Firewire 400 adapters that look like this and think, hmm. This looks like a cheap and cheerful solution to give our iPod connected. Well, I've only got one word for these adapters, and that is... Don't. These adapters are scam products, pure and simple. All they do is join the voltage and ground pins between USB and Firewire, and they have no regulator or controller between them. USB-A and Firewire use two completely different protocols, and it's not possible to convert from one to the other. If you use this to plug an iPod into your PC, the USB port will supply 5 volts while the iPod will try to draw over 12 volts, and it's not going to end well. I've linked to an excellent video explaining why you should never use these things, and looking at the reviews, people have managed to fry their USB ports, so yeah, don't touch them. So there you have it. Three ways to sync your first gen iPod, and one way to avoid. I hope this video has been helpful, and if you need any more support, please check out the Discord servers I've linked down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.